Fun with failure. Hi, welcome. This is Dallas with Fun with Failure. I am shamelessly using the catchphrases of other YouTubers. And you might ask, why would you put that on the internet? Well, because it's always scarier if it's true. But who knows? The best things happen in the dark. We've got 11 stories for you today from TIFU. I hope you enjoy. Let's talk about that. So this just happened. I just walked into class and I see a seat open next to the girl I think is cute. As I take a seat, I see a tissue on the seat. I don't think anything of it and I just sit down. We start talking and we hit it off. I got her number and we decided to study later in the week. Ten minutes pass and my butt is cold. So I start to sit in a different position because I thought maybe it was cutting off blood circulation to my butt. I keep changing position but my butt is still cold. So I finally touch the seat and realize it's wet. I finally move in the tissue that was on the seat. Well, I threw it on the ground, and it's yellow. I'm currently hoping that it's just yellow Gatorade that spilled on the seat and not pee. It might be pee, because if Gatorade spilled, it would be sticky, and it's not. I've got one more hour to go in class before it's over, and I don't want to risk getting up and someone else coming and sitting on the pee seat, because then everyone will think that I peed in it and then left it. Update. It's been eight hours since I left the pee seat. I pray for the next poor soul that the seat claims. I have no idea what the liquid was. I'm hoping it was just water with Mio flavoring in it. If not, I might as well bleach my butt. Update two, just for clarification, I was wearing jeans. That's why I didn't feel the wetness immediately. Also, it's been almost 24 hours since I departed from the pee seat. I washed the jeans from yesterday and I'm wearing them again. I hope my butt doesn't sit upon another pee seat today. This happened like minutes ago. I saw on Facebook where tons of people, they were trying out this prank where they text their moms that they're on their way to the hospital. Moms freaked out and asked why. To which you reply, I can't see when I close my eyes. The replies were hilarious. So I thought, hey, why not? I text my mom. I could barely control my laughter thinking how she would respond. She immediately calls me. I cut the call. I wanted the response on text. She calls again and again. Then after five minutes, dad calls. I was starting to feel bad, so I picked it up. He asked what was wrong. By then, it wasn't funny anymore. My mom was sobbing in the background. She thought it was too serious that I couldn't even pick up the phone. She was uncontrollable. The cherry on top, in the five minute interval, they called up my college hostel dean to ask where I was. Thanks a lot, Facebook. Never pranking my mom again, ever. This happened about five years ago. It was during my sophomore year of high school. I was in that weird rebellious stage at the time, so I picked up vaping. Before homeroom started each day, me and a few of my friends would go to the bathroom and vape. Super cringeworthy in retrospect. One day while vaping, I look to the ceiling and notice a smoke alarm. As we filled the bathroom with smoke, the light on the alarm blinked faster, and as the smoke cleared, the light would flicker off. So, being the idiot 15-year-old I was, I decided to blow the smoke straight onto the fire alarm. At first, nothing happened, but then the fire alarm started blaring. Me and my friends quickly left the bathroom and began to walk down the hall. When we see the school security guard running towards the bathroom, once we saw that, we left the school pretty quick. During fire drills, the school meets on the football field. The only problem that day is that it happened to be freezing and pouring rain. But due to the unorganized school staff, all of the students and teachers were stuck in the pouring rain as they tried to figure out what to do. The entire school was finally moved off the football field and into the middle school across the parking lot. I was walking towards the middle school and I hear sirens. It turns out a couple of fire trucks and some police were heading to the school. It takes them a couple of hours to check the entire school and then all the students were ushered back into the high school and sent to class. I was called to the principal office about the incident, but I quickly denied it, and due to no proof, it was never mentioned again. This literally just happened. I'm sitting in the emergency room next to my dad, who was telling me about how his old man pain is much worse compared to my pain, and lecturing me about how I am an idiot. Here's some context. About a week ago, we had scheduled someone to come over to our house and install some insulation. 
I had asked my younger brother to organize the attic a little so that the guy could move around, and being a good younger brother, he completely ignored my request. Note, I work until 12 at night, so when I find out that he didn't do it, I was forced to wake up in the morning and organize it. He's a scrawny little kid, while I'm a bear-like man, so it would have been easier for him than for me, but whatever. There are places in the attic that are not for placing things, because it's just sheetrock which is incredibly fragile, especially things that are about 5 foot 11, 250 pounds. Well, I was just about done, until I tripped. I got tangled in some Christmas lights, which fell out of a flimsy box that I was moving, in which I got tangled in my feet, and I fell on the sheetrock part of the attic floor, which led to me falling through it, nearly landing on my back. I got lucky though, because my shorts got caught on the wooden beam. The trade-off though? was that my right leg smashed against the same wooden beam. My adrenaline was pumping, so it didn't hurt at the time. That was the least of my problems, because I'm literally hanging there from the roof on my shorts, and I was able to use one hand to grab something. I was there for a minute, listening to Bonavir Radio in the background, while I tried to figure out a way that I could get out of this. It's a pretty long fall down, about 8 foot, so I try to pull myself up, but I can't find anything from my right hand to grab on. So I decided that I would just drop down and hopefully find a way to land on my feet. In order to do this, I have to take off my shorts because they're hooked on the beam and all my efforts to free myself are fruitless. This all happened at once. In fact, I'm not really sure how it happened. As I undo the knot of my shorts, my legs slipped out and my boxes almost went with it. Somehow, I landed on the floor, on my feet, but the pain shot through my right leg and I collapsed. I literally can't stand now. I limped and crawled to the sofa until my dad comes home and he sees me in all my failures. I was alone in the house until he got there. Well, the story evolved. I'm in the doctor's office now in a wheelchair. Fun fact, my cousin is a doctor and because the rest of the family is successful, he's laughing at me with my dad. The nurse is looking at me and she feels bad on my behalf. Ah, uh, what a wonderful day. This happened today, unlike the majority of these posts. Maybe even more finite? It just happened just seconds ago. For context, I live with my grandparents and their four dogs. A big Doberman, a mini pen, and two small Yorkies. The mini pen we call Sammy Davis. That's his actual name. He is loud. The loudest of the four. He also has separation anxiety with my grandfather, which causes him to yip, quite literally sometimes, only stopping when we let him outside without my grandpa. Moments ago, he was guarding his food bowl from the other dogs, and he began to growl for no reason, unless he thought that one of us human was going to steal his food. So I'll pick up the horse whip that we keep in the kitchen, for some reason, and I crack it in the air in his direction. I was pretty happy when he stopped growling, and I had actually made a good cracking noise with the whip. Then my grandfather grabs his shoulder. I hit him with the whip, and I left a big red stripe along his shoulder, where I had caught him with the whip while trying to stop the dog from yapping. So, this actually happened last night while cooking dinner. A little preface here. As a kid, I was always skinny. Like, really skinny. Lanky and just kinda awkward. I'm in my 30s now, and now over the past five years or so, my boobs have gotten big. Way bigger than they ever have been, even in my 20s. And now, somehow, I've not gotten used to them. They got in the way often. Okay, on to the story. My boyfriend got off of work a little late last night, so I went to sleep. I had promised him to cook though, so I asked him to call me when he was on his way home so that I can get up and start dinner. He did. I was a little groggy, so I just threw on a wife beater and shorts when I got out of bed. No bra. He gets home. I happily have three pots that are almost finished on the stove. One of them is kinda tall, as it's a steamer pot. It was on the front burner and done, steaming the heck out of rice and veggies, just as it should. I stand on my tiptoes to reach the dial to turn it off. Over the pot. Why I didn't move the giant steaming pot is a mystery to me. My common sense failed, as did the small support offered by my tank top. My left nipple landed square on the lip of the pot. I dropped my beer, fell on my knees, and almost threw up. I couldn't scream. I couldn't move. I couldn't think. It was like blue lightning. Pain, pain, and more pain. It took me a minute to regain my faculties. When I finally did, I put a cold compress on it, and I took some Advil. 
I sat on the couch, holding my burnt but now cold boob, in stunned silence for a long time. My boyfriend finished taking the pots off the stove. Today, it looks a little like a brand. It's a straight line of burn, right across my left side of my areola. Pretty dark colored, but it's not blistered, thank god. Still taking Advil because anything that rubs against it is a whole new fun ride. It is an idiot reminder that I will have for a while too. Not that I need one. It was a hard lesson that I won't forget anytime soon. My boyfriend offered to kiss it to make it better. Yeah, no, not for a while. So, some years ago I was in high school, and one day, while we were waiting on the PE teacher, some of us got bored, and we randomly started playing hide and seek. We established that we could hide anywhere except for inside the main high school building. So we ran and I decided to hide inside another of the buildings, the gym. When you enter through the main door, you find some stairs, and you can either go up to the locker rooms, or go down to the exercise area, and I decided to go down. But I was excited, and I was in a hurry because of the game. So while going down the stairs, I decided to jump over a few steps. I jumped fast, and I flew vigorously until my forehead hit the bottom of the upper stairs. Then my body backflipped in the air, and I fell on the ground like a vigorous potato sack. I literally saw stars while going full slapstick. I didn't fall unconscious, but I was stunned, and it took me a while to get up to be able to walk out of the building. Then my classmates saw me, and they didn't know how to react, until someone pointed out that I looked like a unicorn with a big bump on my head. Now I have been branded with a new nickname. So a college friend recently bought a new place in his wife's hometown, and he invited a bunch of us to spend the weekend. I road trip over to suburbia with my buddy, and through many series of wrong turns and detours, we were the last to arrive. We didn't stop at his house first, we met my friends at the Main Street type bar. It looked like it was filled with all the people's drinking age population. We booze and chat and everything's great. As is typical of my friends group, people filter out at different times. Everyone is heading back to the couple's house for extended shenanigans. I'm many drinks deep at this point, and I'm chatting up a few people. So I'm the last one to leave. I'm not too concerned, because apparently, we're only a few miles away from my buddy's place. I text for the address, order an Uber, go outside and wait. It's pouring rain, and at least 10 other people are there waiting for cars. I see a black Camry pull up on my app. I see the back of a Camry on the corner. I run over and ask the driver if it's my car. I hear an inaudible mumble that sounds like yes. I decide that's good enough. So I jump in. We get into a five minute conversation about how terrible the weather is while we drive to my friend's house. The driver stops at a generic suburban house that has a long driveway. He says this is for you and I get out. It's pouring harder. I run through the rain, see the lights on on the house, knock twice to be polite. I expect it to be unlocked as my friend said that they'd leave the door open so I immediately let myself in. I walk down a few flight of steps toward the noise. I arrive to what looked like a den and I say hello. Then the screaming starts. Screaming. I'm momentarily confused why there are screams of terror. But then I realize I have no idea who these people are. Drunk and confused, I have absolutely no clue what to do. I decided I need to get out of there, and I turn around and run outside. I go to the end of the driveway and stand there in the rain. I look down at my phone to text my friends, and I see that I have several missed calls. The gears start to turn, but before I could work it out, one of the guys who was in the house, he comes outside and he starts yelling at me. He asked me what the heck I was doing. He tells me the cops are on their way and he'll kill me if I get any closer. Simultaneously, another car pulls up. This one with the guy in it. He gets out of the car, surveys the scene, and goes, Dude, I think you got into my Uber. Suddenly everything makes sense. Now while I'm explaining what happened to the new arrival, he could tell his friend that I'm not a murderer. I'm just a drunk idiot. That's when the police arrive. Luckily, they got a kick out of it. This happened no less than five minutes ago, and it's a minor screw up compared to some of the things I've read here on Reddit. And for some which, I'm scarred for life. I'm looking at you, coconut. I'm typing this and I'm trying to get every last bit of embarrassment out of me so I can go to sleep peacefully, somewhat guilt free. So, I just moved into a studio flat, quite a number of floors up, deliberately because I thought that there would be less spiders. I have a horrific phobia of them, and they had caused me to faint in the past because of fear. 
tonight, just as I was arranging my titties ready to go to the land of Nod, I noticed the thickest, longest spider leg right behind my bed. I spent the last half an hour hyperventilating, contemplating my life and questioning whether I should call my mom to get me. She lives an hour away, and I was worried about the flack that I would be given for calling her at night and giving her the initial panic that I have died, as mums do with her crazy jumping to conclusions, or if I should knock next door. I've never met them. I was half naked and my clothes were too close within spider range or calling security. So I finally called up security because I've got to be up in seven hours and I'm seriously grumpy without my beauty sleep and there's no chance I'm getting a wink of sleep with that monstrosity behind me. To my surprise he says, sure no problem, what room are you? And he turns up two minutes later seeing me in tears huddled in the corner of my room. He uses a light but can't see anything, moves the bed, I'm getting more and more hysterical at the thought of that thing escaping, to which I hear, that's not a spider, it's a piece of cotton from the headboard. I have never been more embarrassed in my life. He did get rid of a daddy long leg on his way out of the room, so it wasn't a total wasted trip. So I just called security up in the middle of the night to rescue me from this scary piece of cotton. This happened a few years ago, long before the resurgence of it. My mom is an artist and she's made me an assortment of life-size Halloween decorations. A 12-foot tall Grim Reaper with a scythe, a bandage-wrapped mummy, and a 6-foot tall stocky murderous clown. This creature was a source of nightmares. He had crazy clown hair, dead eyes, and held a decapitated head in one hand. Both my roommate and I hated this clown. I had nightmares about it crawling up the stairs to murder me in my sleep. So, it was normally stored in the corner of the basement, facing the wall. One night, I was feeling particularly prankish. So I hauled the clown out of the basement and positioned it in my roommate's closet. The closet had sliding doors, so when you opened the door, the clown could just fall out. I took some fishing line, tied a bell to the end, and placed it in the closet, and wrapped the rest of it out of her room, down the hallway, and into my room. And I waited. She comes home, and then she goes to bed and I wait. Around 2 a.m., I start pulling the fishing line, making the bell jingle. She got up, and she was expecting one of my cats to be trapped in the closet, and she flings the door open. The most blood-curdling scream I've ever heard filled the house. She moved out shortly after. I'm gonna need a new roommate. Edit. No, I'm not a corporate shill, but if you know where you can get hired for one, let me know. Also, it would appear that everyone assumes that I'm a guy. I'm a chick. We have evil streaks too. I absolutely learned my lesson and I will never do it again. This happened yesterday. I was working in an area where there was only one truck stop nearby for folks to go to. It has a decent sized bathroom with three stalls, one of them being the handicap accessible. With the common discomfort most people have taking a dump in public restrooms, I opted to use the stall farthest from the door in the back, the handicapped accessible stall. As I'm releasing my previous day's fast food, it quickly becomes apparent to me that this isn't an ordinary crap. I realize that this potty break went from an innocent side effect of this morning's coffee to the release of some fecal demon stirring deep within my bowels. It wasn't more than a few seconds after that realization that I came to another, increasingly devastation realization. At first, it wasn't a big deal. Just another guy coming into the restroom. I was hidden in the back stall, aside from a few discreet shuffling noises, and a clearing of my throat to let him know that there was someone in there. It wasn't a big deal. This is where things escalated, quickly. I hear quite heavy breathing and some creaking noises. All of a sudden, the door to my stall is rattling. What the heck, dude? There's two other stalls, I thought to myself. Not a moment goes by before I look under the stall door to see a pair of feet and a set of wheels. Oh crap, I'm thinking. I took the one stall this guy can use. I hear frantic mumbling and more fast heavy breathing. At this point, I'm beyond the point of no return. I am fully engaged in this battle with this demon. I am audibly struggling to get through this crap. Pun intended as fast as possible. Farts, splashes, and groans, the whole nine yards. The next 60 seconds look something like this. I was frantically trying to excrete the remaining Hershey squirts lingering in my colon. This guy is breathing heavily, knocking and wheezing, please hurry, 
I'm actively releasing coils of soft serve human waste as I let him know, I'm trying, I'm so sorry. I began wiping frantically, knowing full well that I hadn't totally finished. Doing my best to pinch off, I'm grabbing huge wads of toilet paper and quickly cleaning my butt. I knew it wasn't all the way clean, but in my desperation of the moment, I didn't care. I took a big wad of paper, shoved it in between my butt cheeks, and quickly pulled up my pants and flushed. I opened the stall door and the wheelchair in front of me was empty. The bathroom doors open and I see a middle-aged man with a horrified look on his face. Dad? This guy yells as he rushes toward me. Next to me, on the ground in the stall that his wheelchair cannot fit into, is the elderly man with an O2 tank next to him, clenching the edge of the bowl. I, I'm so sorry. Stumbling over my words in shock, I backed against the wall, looking on helplessly. I realized that the old man's pants had a huge wet mark all over the back and front of them. The distinct smell of human excrement was pungent. The man was helping his father, and having previously ignored me, he turned and said, Please leave. I apologized again, to no reply, and before I walked out, I made the most awkward eye contact of my life with the elderly man. I could feel his thoughts, as though he psychically communicated, You did this to me! I'll never forget that moment as long as I live. I feel horrible. I won't be using handicap stalls if I can help it ever again. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed those stories, smash that like button or I'll smash you. Or you can hit that button like a psycho. I know these are dark matters, but the darkness always matters. And until next time, thank you for listening and take very good care of yourselves. You know what time it is. T time to leave. <laughs>